Yes, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care who the next guy picked is. I don't agree with you. <laughs> okay, Jeff. I just don't agree with your analysis all right. at all. <laughs> Standing by with the new guy in Indianapolis, who, of course, is General Manager Bill Polian, is with our Sean Salisbury. And, Sean, certainly Bill made an interesting move uh, way up top in the first round. He sure did, and we're going to find out just about that. Bill, you pass on Ricky Williams, the, the popular pick, and not the proven commodity, and you go for Edger and James. Why him instead of Williams? Well, we felt uh, with Edgerin's uh, ability in the passing game to catch the ball, catch it on the run, do something with it after it, he caught it, it was the right fit with Peyton Manning. Uh, both players are excellent players. I could very well call it a tie on the board. We just felt that uh, the superior hands, and uh, not superior, but, but the more natural hands and the more uh, naturalness in the passing game uh, gave uh, Edgerin a slight edge and it was the right fit for us. Now, is there a need to justify this pick to your fans? Well, I don't think so. I don't know how you can justify it other than what happens on the field. Uh, talk is cheap. What, would ha what happens in the fall is what counts. Well, with Marshall Falk gone, you fill the need at running back. With your second round pick, you take outside linebacker uh, Mike Peterson. And when you watch Javon curse teammates, it seems like Peterson is the one who jumps out on film. Yeah, he's the one that makes every play. He's a, he's a run and hit guy. Uh, he's got great instincts. He can really run fast. He's a 5-4-5 five, five, uh, player, 5-5-4, uh, five, five, excuse me. And uh, uh, he, he, can, he can make plays all over the field. We badly need help at that position. We need to increase our team speed. So, uh, uh, you know, we're happy with that pick. So when you get to the third round, needs now, you stay on defense? Well, in a perfect world, I guess we stay on defense. But uh, who knows? We'll see what's available at the time. Have you got the two guys you wanted? Yes, we have. We certainly have. Well, not only they got the not only they got the two guys they wanted, Chris, they're on their way. Offense, defense have covered both needs. All right, Sean and Bill, thank you. Mike Peterson is a, is a heck of a player. Let, let's get caught up here in the second round. We gave you Kevin Johnson, Cleveland. We gave you Charles Fisher, defensive back, Cincinnati. We gave you tackle Chris Terry, Carolina's first pick. And then, while well, we were away a little bit with the commissioner, Philadelphia picked Barry Gardner, linebacker, Northwestern, and Mel. He and Peterson are really players that I thought might have stuck in the first round. Well, productive players, Chris. I think you look at Andy Katz and more a better physical ability, but Gardner, I don't like the single tear. A little shorter, but very compact, and you don't see uh, a Barry Gardner on the ground that much. He sifts through traffic very well, stays on his feet. Good blocker awareness, and here makes the tackle against Illinois. I think that's the key. When you're that size and that strong, you can get to the flank, so he can do that. And I think the, as far as staying on his feet, very instinctive football player. And I think when you look at Barry Gardner, came on strong this past season. Had about 20, 22 tackles in just about every game. They were legitimate. He was around the ball a great deal this year for Northwestern, Chris. Well, we heard Sean and, uh, and uh, Bill Polian just talk about Mike Peterson, linebacker from Florida. Here's another player that I, I really like him. You know he's an athletic type. Well, Javon Curse got the publicity, and uh, in some, some games deservedly so. But you look at Mike Peterson, 6'1 and a half, about 233, 127 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, always around the ball. Number 29 there on the sack, and he's a tough kid, a form tackler. Showed up big in every game, and Florida has a lot of big games every year in the SEC. He never disappeared from the action. He was always there making plays, and in coverage, you have an every down performer. I think that's the key here. For Mike Peterson. You can keep him on the field. He reminds me a little bit of John Mobley, Lee Woodall. Doesn't have the ideal size, not physically imposing, but I'll tell you what, he's tremendously instinctive and like a Barry Gardner, you know, 15, 20 tackles just about every game, Chris. He's a high school quarterback and he, he went almost 800 plays in college. Now, John Jansen in the Washington Chicago trade, the Skins moved up three spots, it cost them a fifth, and they picked tackle John Jansen from Michigan. Well, right tackle here against Tom Burke, the pass rushing defensive end from Wisconsin. And does a good job keeping him at bay here against Michigan. You're looking at uh, against the game against Indiana. John Jansen Barry is the, the defensive end. I think a consistent football player. They call him the Rock. He played in a ton of straight games at Michigan. Never missed any time because of injuries. And was a guy that Lloyd Carr had in the starting lineup every game since he's been a head coach with the Wolverines. They're against Hawaii again. Easily handingly undersized defensive end. So a very steady player. Not the tremendously physically gifted bookend of say a Tate or a Shelton or even a Gibson for that matter, but John Jansen, very steady and very solid in the Big Ten throughout his career. In Carolina with their second second round pick, you knew George Seifert had to look at defensive line where they were really long in the tooth. Mike Rucker, Nebraska to the Panthers. Well, there you see him in the Senior Bowl against Derek Fletcher from Baylor. That's where he did his damage. Had a couple sacks in that game. Not tremendously productive during the season, although he 
did come on late. So you're looking at a guy 250 to 255 pounds, and the key will be how will he hold up against the run in the NFL without having ideal size. He's tall, he's rangy, may need to put on a little weight, but late in the season he came on, and that senior bowl effort moved him up from maybe a mid to late two, early three, into the early second round area, Chris. And now, can you believe this? Jimmy Johnson has just picked Jimmy Johnson. Miami has just selected in the second round running back James Johnson. So the hair's a little different, but, you know, the name's the same. A transfer from East Mississippi Junior College and gave Jackie Sherrill two great years of steady productivity. A big back who has all the way potential. Has some speed, although he doesn't have the 4-4 clocking. He can break at the distance, has that up-over-the-top type leaping ability. And you see a kid here who can break a tackle and then turn it on. Had a lot of long runs, average about six yards a carry. So, you know, James Johnson this season, he lasts as a junior and senior, one of the most productive backs in the country, and he did it as well well against SEC competition. Question is that upright style, even though he broke tackles in the SEC, will he run into some interference with an upright style that allows him to take a lot of solid direct hits? Then you wonder about you know, durability over a 16-game period. So that's a, a run there in the second round. And now let's go down to Miami where Hank, I mean, really, Jimmy Johnson's picked Jimmy Johnson? <laughs> yeah. Is this town big enough for two JJs? Well, I'll tell you, the second JJ is big enough to fill the big running back need that Jimmy had. And yesterday when I talked with Jimmy, and there was a lot of talk about Cecil Collins, and, and I was, he said, he's not the only guy we're looking at. And I said, how about J.J. Johnson? He smiled and he said, can you hold off on that until we're on the clock? This is the guy they really wanted. And look at what they did. They traded out of the 24th spot, and they were sitting in the exact same position in terms of choice 15 picks later because nobody took a running back in between. Look how happy Jimmy is. You know, just jumping up and down around the war room. He's thrilled with this pick, believe me. Let's go back to New York. I just want to see his name and lights a little bit more, <laughs> Hank. I, th I think that's what it is. So Miami has moved down a couple of times and still got a big running back, as you point out. So we're rolling now in the second round. Chicago, St. Louis, coming up. to see in the evening bars. Can you say smell? A fabulous Scotty Bass. What in heaven's name? Oh, it's a black cotton blend with yellow buttons. It reads 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T -E for collect calls. Um, does anybody know where the phone is? I have to make a collect call. Bravo! You can win this hot little sweatshirt instantly when you complete a collect call with 1-800-CALL-A-T-T. -E it's the same bargain basement rate all the time. Is Jason there? I'll see. Still looking. The surprisingly new Land Rover. The biggest news from Land Rover in years. And voted best compact sport utility vehicle by Automobile Magazine. How do you plan on funding your retirement? Conseco's annuities and mutual funds can help. Conseco, step up. With all the attention McGuire got last year, I got jealous. So this year, I'm going for the record. Maybe instead of the big unit, They'll start calling me the long unit. Tonight on ESPN, National Hockey Night, Baseball Tonight, and Sports Center. On ESPN 2, the 99 NFL Draft, followed by X in Concert and NHL Tonight. ESPN Classic, Behind the Fights, and College Basketball Classics. Do you have all the ESPN networks? 
back in the second round. And Mel, the top of your board for just ability is Cecil Collins, but his is a different story for McNeese State. It is. Uh, you know, 